You want more power? We've got it. But isn't it funny how sometimes the seemingly simplest of tasks can give you the most issues? Let's talk about adding some more powerful motors to the CTC-01. Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm going tiny trucking here on the channel once again, this time with a little update on the CTC-01 chassis. A small change, but I think it's a big improvement and a highly requested part. But it took a little more time to get things figured out than I thought it would, which I'll be talking about in just a bit. But before we dive in too deep, just to do a little bit of a recap, about a year ago we began working on a simple, durable, and easy to 3D print chassis design for converting 124th and 125th scale big rig and commercial truck model kits like this one into fully functional RC models. Bit by bit, I've been taking you all along with me as we've continued to refine the design and now have actually completed a working model of a GMC General tractor and a nice trailer to go with it. Of course, all of this can be seen in the prior videos, conveniently put into a playlist, which is linked below in the description if you'd like to check that out. Probably needless to say at this point, but so far it's been a huge success. Not without a few hurdles, of course, but when you're diving into this niche of the RC hobby, you've got to expect a few challenges along the way. As I've talked about before, one of the things I wanted to improve on this GMC, as well as the CTC-01 platform in general, is giving this rig more power. Of course, keep in mind the whole goal here is just to convert a plastic model into a well-functioning RC vehicle. It's not being built specifically for power or speed. If things like having a tremendous amount of pulling power relative to its size, and having a more detailed drivetrain and suspension are important to you, you're going to need to step up to the more popular, but also much more expensive 114th scale trucks, such as these kits made by Tamiya. What's being made here isn't something that's going to match any of those chassis. Instead, I'm carving out a bit of a unique niche here, taking advantage of the many great plastic model kits available and creating a nice, simple chassis to go underneath. I'm all for pushing limits and making things better and trying to get the most out of not just this platform, but really any platform in general. But with that in mind, let's not go comparing Fieros to Ferraris here. I'm afraid this little DIY chassis you can 3D print and build at home for under 100 bucks is not going to match the performance or detail of these 14 scale rigs that cost thousands. They're phenomenal machines and Tamiya kits are awesome, but respectfully that's not the benchmark for what I'm building here. But even with this important piece of context in mind, these N20 motors can get bogged down quite easily, and we're incapable of pushing this GMC with the trailer up any significant inclines, and we're quite slow. Sufficient for some indoor driving on smooth, hard surfaces, but clearly this truck could use some more power. Fortunately, there's a couple simple solutions. I decided to start with the N20 size motors to kind of get a baseline of performance and then move up as needed. Technically, they are the most compact and lightweight, as well as being the least expensive, although really by RC standards, all of these motors are extremely inexpensive. I think these slightly larger N30 motors are better in every way, and they fit the same motor mounts, they're just slightly longer, as you can see here. At this time, I don't think I really see any reason to buy an N20 over an N30. The N30 motors seem to provide noticeably more power and can have a higher top speed, with only a slightly larger footprint. If you're going to do a project with this style of motor mount, I think the N30 is going to be the way to go. That said, the performance difference isn't huge. I'd still only recommend it for driving over smooth, flat surfaces, but again, certainly better performance, even if still not great. Now if you really want to pull some styrene with ease, the N50 seems to be the way to go. More power and an even higher top speed. Again, I'm being relative here, but this is really more to the level that I wanted when I started this project. Nothing crazy, but it's got decent enough low down modulation, reasonable top speed, even with the trailer, and plenty of power to go up reasonably steep inclines and tackle some bumps. While the gear assembly remains basically identical on all three of these different sizes, the N50 motor is not just longer, but also wider and taller as well. This means it needs its own unique motor mount. As you can see here, when you're selecting the STL files that you want to print, you can choose either the current N20 and N30 motor mount or the new N50 mount. Now, in addition to that, there is one other new part that you'll need if you want to install these N50 motors, and that's the lifted fifth wheel mount, which allows a little more room underneath for the larger motors. But those are the only parts that are different if you want to use these larger motors. All other parts on the chassis are the exact same regardless. 
As with all the other parts, I'm printing these in PLA, which is plenty strong enough for an RC model such as this. I've yet to have any issues with the motors getting hot enough to weaken or deform the plastic in any way, but if you encounter any issues with that, you may want to consider printing these in a more heat resistant material. Installing this larger motor is similar to the other ones. First you want to go ahead and remove one screw holding the gear assembly in place as you'll be replacing it with an M1.6 by 3 fastener. The only real difference here is that it sort of snaps in from the side rather than sliding in from the front. It should seat fully into place and then you can install the screw to secure the motor. They fit the exact same way on the chassis as well. The only difference is that because they're larger, they're sort of shoehorned in there, as you can see. As a result, the outer edges of the motor mounts actually rub against the frame, and the motors rub against each other. This shouldn't be an issue, and it actually helps to keep the axles from having too much play. You may, however, want to consider applying a little grease where the motors and the mounts rub to make sure that they can move smoothly. If there's ever too much slop, you can place an M3 washer between the two motor mounts. Again, other than those few minor differences, the assembly process of this chassis is exactly the same. If you're building a CTC-01 chassis, please see this video here. I go over the entire assembly process step by step. So you'll have to forgive me here with this test drive footage as going outside with this truck isn't really an option at the moment due to snow. Obviously going around this flat track is no issue, and here's the top speed with the 95 to 381 RPM N50 motor. Now initially I ordered several even faster 190 to 762 RPM motors. They of course were faster, but after a while I ended up breaking every single one of them. Some of them actually stripped out almost immediately. They all had the exact same failure, which was the brass worm gear connected to the output shaft would strip out and not transfer power. I was really bummed out as other than that failure, they worked great and were exactly what I wanted. I was a little hesitant to buy more of the exact same thing, so I figured I'd at least get a different RPM just to see if that makes a difference. These here are one step lower down, at least from this seller, and so far after hours of driving over a variety of different surfaces and encountering different challenges, I've had absolutely zero issues. For their part, the N20 and N30 motors have also been absolutely indestructible so far, which is what I tend to expect from these little motor and gear assemblies. So as there's some kind of issue with using the highest RPM N50 motors in this particular application, I'm not really sure just yet. It kind of seems unlikely to me, but I don't know. I do plan to continue testing though. Maybe it was just a bad batch, or maybe there really is an issue when using that higher RPM version that isn't an issue with this slower one. I don't know, kind of weird. Of course, this made what I thought was going to be a very simple process of designing a new mount and testing it with the new motor a bit more complicated, frustrating, and time-consuming. Of all the things here, I wasn't expecting several of these identical full metal motor and gearbox assemblies to fail, but sometimes it's the part you least expect. But I think this is a good demonstration of why I really like to actually spend some time testing and experimenting with things first, learning what I can before eventually releasing STL files or physical products. Hence why we haven't yet offered this chassis design as a physical kit, only digital print files for now, although at this point it is getting very close to being ready for something I'd be willing to sell as a physical kit, so stay tuned for more info on that. All I know right now is that it's working really good with these specific N50 motors I currently have, and again I'll continue to do some more testing to see if those highest RPM motors are really guaranteed to quickly fail in this particular application, or perhaps more likely it's just a bad batch. Part failures aside though, the N50 size motors are what I plan to continue using. At this stage I just don't see much of an advantage to choosing the smaller size motors. The low down modulation is okay, but if you're going to be driving at slower speeds a lot, you may want to try ordering one of the lower RPM motors and see if that gives you more smooth control at slow speeds. Personally, I think it would be really cool to build a truck with a ton of torque at low speeds and then essentially build an obstacle course with barriers and other objects 
which you have to navigate the truck around with a trailer attached. If you've ever played the game American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator, when you go to drop off a load, you'll be prompted with a few options of where you want to drop off the trailer, with the more difficult location giving you the maximum amount of points. But of course, you might have to navigate various obstacles, which is obviously more of a challenge, but also quite fun. Likewise, I think setting up some similar scenarios for these RC models would be fun, but you really need some very smooth, slow speed control to make things less frustrating. Now, all the driving you've seen has been done on 3S. They're still pretty decent on speed and power with 2S, but again, if you really want to get the full potential out of these 12 volt motors, I recommend using a 3S LiPo. Of course, make sure you're using a 3S LiPo compatible ESC. I am still tinkering and experimenting with these motors and currently waiting on a shipment from overseas, but if you decide to go ahead and step up to the N50s as I have done here, please let me know what your experience is. Is everything working great just as expected? Did you have the same issue that I had with the first batch of motors? Are you noticing excessive heat that might be too much for the material you're printing in? The feedback is always helpful and appreciated. This was a little harder and more time consuming than I expected for such a simple upgrade. But of course, more than anything, a lot of time was spent waiting on the new motors to arrive from overseas. But regardless, it was definitely worth the effort. Being that this was such a frequently requested item, I'm really happy to have these N50 motor mount designs ready to go and share with all of you. I'll put a link to the STL files below in the description. Huge thanks as always to all of our members over on Patreon for making all of this possible. More parts for the CTC-01 are on the way, including some new wheel designs, which I think are gonna look really cool. I'm definitely excited about that. Of course, stay tuned for a future video for all the details. If you're building one of these and have any questions, please feel free to send us a message either on Patreon or our email is another great way to get in contact with us. But with the GMC General basically complete at this point, aside from maybe adding a few little details here and there in the future, I think it's definitely time to embark on a new build utilizing the CTC-01. I'm not sure, but I'm kind of thinking a cab over would be cool for the next build. I know I've seen at least one cab over build using this chassis so far. It can certainly be done, but it is going to be a bit more of a challenge to hide all of the electronics and still get a lifelike engine bay when the cab is tipped forward. I think it's gotta happen though, and it would be a cool thing to showcase here on the channel. Something a little bit different, but we'll see. Until then though, as always, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all found this video informative and I'll see you next time.